What's going on everybody, Rob Peary here, and today we're going over this beauty. It's a roaster from the land of Norway, which is pretty far away from me. Um, it's the Roost L100. It's sleek, it's stylish, and let me tell you, it roasts the hell out of some coffee. I'm also going to be giving away some coffee at the end of the video, which is going to be from this roaster, so stick around from that, and uh, yeah, let's dive in. Now, Roost sent me this roaster. I did not pay for it, but I'm very thankful they did. Because let's face it, it's pretty badass. Although it has been a joy to roast on, I want to be clear up front that I will not be making any recommendations in this video. This is just my first impressions and my initial thoughts on this device. So I want to go over three main topics with the roaster. One is my first impressions, kind of the build quality and like the specs and stuff like that. Two is going to be the preferred roast method. And then three, I want to kind of go into like what I think could be improved and kind of issues that I've had and stuff like that. So with that being said, first impressions, I mean, this thing's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. It's a hunk of metal. I mean, it clanks, okay? And I mean that in a good way. I mean, it's definitely not one of those roasters you're just going to pack under your arm or something like that, like a little football. And this thing's uh, pretty sturdy. It comes in around 33 pounds. Also has these little rubber stub nubs underneath. So, I mean, you're really not moving that thing. Kid comes around the corner and trips on that cable. Kid's hitting the ground, dude. This thing ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? As far as first impressions, too, with the UI, I mean, it's kind of one of the things, you know, it's like, it's not the prettiest, but uh, we'll kind of go into that in, uh, later in the video. Uh, as far as the data you can pull from this thing, I mean, it's insane. We're going to go into the specs here in a little bit, but like the amount of information that you can get per roast, I don't know if there's any other roaster out there like it, it, it that, that I know. I'm sure there probably is, but I'm just saying like, I haven't really roasted on any that can provide this much data. One thing I really like about it is you can just just slam batches back to back. You can roast and cool at the same time, which I think is super sweet. Roast drops in here, let it charge back. It takes just a few seconds to really charge back to the tip it needs to be. Drop some coffee in, bam, you going again. You know what I mean? Now there are a few features of this roaster that make it unique. And that's kind of one of the things you have to decide if it's good or bad for you, you know? So real quick, let's dive into the features and specs of this roaster. There are six sensors plus a new one. There's an environmental temp, a bean temp, an exhaust temp. There's a drum temp. They have a first crack detection sensor. They have a proximity sensor. And they just came out with the new inlet temperature sensor on L100 and the L100 Plus. So that's seven sensors you will have in this little cubed roaster. That's insane. So Roos sent me this on the inlet temperature sensor because it is the new sensor that they've added to these machines. What they say is basically the inlet temperature sensor is a sensor that monitors the temperature that comes from the heating element and goes into the roasting chamber. By using this sensor, you will know exactly what temperature you are dealing with and it gives you a more accurate and consistent roast time after time. I definitely want to kind of dive more into that. Uh, use it a lot more and kind of see how it works. I'm also going to be talking to Roost about this a little bit in, in the future, kind of going over that with them and letting them kind of explain it to me a little better. So I will definitely be diving more into the inlet temperature sensor in a separate video. Uh, I may do a whole dedicated video to that because it is something pretty important that they're trying to push. Other things, there's automatic roasting. You can automatically roast based on profiles. You can download profiles from Roost that actually kind of come with the machine. You can get on this portal, go on there. There's tons of people on there, either providing their profiles, different coffees and stuff like that, sharing information. You can create your own profile if you want, or you can go and edit anybody's profile, any of that Roost already had programmed in or anything like that. You can go in there and just edit, change up whatever you want. Or again, you can create your own new profile from scratch. If you're more into manual roasting and you don't want to go off any like, you know, pre-programmed profiles or create your own profile or anything like that, you can roast manual on this thing. I'm not going to lie, it's like hopping on a roaster for the first time. So, I mean, it's going to be all over the place and it's going to take you a little bit of time to get it. But uh, roast a few batches, you'll slowly start getting the hang of the manual side of it. And it, it's cool. I mean, you can do whatever you want with it. You can pretty much adjust everything. You can adjust the drum speed, airflow, the power, the actual power of the unit. Unit. There's a little trier for uh, visual checking if you're into that type of stuff. And then you have the touch screen where you can go into your profiles and stuff like that. I'm not going to lie. I haven't had any issues as far as like the roaster glitching or anything like that or sticking. As far as usability, it works really well. Uh, there is no daily limit on this roaster. You can roast from sun up to sundown. And if you want to start back the next morning, get at it. There's a chafe collector in here so you don't have to 
Ooh, that's kind of loud. It holds a good bit of chafe, so you can roast about 20 times before you have to change it, depending on the green coffee you're putting in there. You know, obviously some green coffees, you know, produce a lot more chafe than others, uh, depending on the process and stuff like that. So real quick on the profiles, there's three profile methods you can kind of use on this machine. There's the bean temp, the air temp, and then also the power temp profiles you can use. Usually on most like gas roasters and stuff like that, there's really only the bean temp profile that you kind of go off of. But this roaster, you can kind of use three. It takes some getting used to. And that's one thing I don't want to speak on too much right now because I am technically still getting used to it and trying to figure out how the air temp uh, profile kind of works and everything. Now, a few things to note, you can roast on this machine without Wi-Fi. Like when I made the video with the old coffee, I only had a computer for one of them. So I set the Ikawa up on the computer and this one, I just pressed the profile and let it roast. I didn't have it hooked up to anything like that. So I could literally put coffee in right now click the button with no data or anything hooked up and this machine will still roast. So I do like that because if you ever get in a bind where your computer's down and you already have your profile saved that you want to use, you can still roast. So I think that's super cool. Now I will say the trier lets in a pretty good bit of air. I mean, it's a small unit. So once you pull this trier all the way out, you're letting a good bit of air flow in. Whenever you're roasting on an automatic setting, it's going to throw your power settings all over the place because it's trying to compensate for that air. So what you want to do is you just basically want to pull it out just a little bit, get a little peak, don't waste a bunch of time with it, and then go ahead and put your trier back in. It doesn't affect it that much on manual because honestly everything is being controlled manually and it's not going to throw it off that bad. It's, your machine's not going to be compensating because you're manually changing everything. So that's one thing I kind of noticed too. So just kind of be careful with that. You know, just don't use the trier too much on automatic. And if you do, just use it sparingly. Uh, as far as the loudness, I am on this mic, but it's really not that loud. It's not as loud as the Akawa, especially when it's running or when you're roasting coffee. It's pretty quiet. I could easily have a conversation with somebody while we roast on this machine and it would not affect the conversation at all. It's not like you're trying to talk over the machine or anything. That's one of the things a lot of people always kind of complain about that they're loud and stuff. Um, it has the exhaust in the back. You know, definitely need to exhaust it out. I don't roast right here have a little spot in the wall over there while I'll kind of plug the exhaust into the wall. So with that being said, let's move into some of the issues that I've had with the roaster and also things that I think Roost could kind of fix, you know, later down the road. First of all is this third party app that they use called Particle. The app's called Particle and you have to use it to basically set up the machine. Now I'm not going to lie, like to be honest, it was a pretty poor experience. It took me about 30 minutes to get it set up and it's one of them things like when you first get a machine like this and you have that bad experience just trying to set it up and all the issues you have using this third-party app to get this machine running it just puts a bad taste in your mouth from the beginning I will say after that point it's an amazing experience like this roaster it does a great job roasting the build quality is great it it functions really nicely but setting up this machine was just difficult I know sample roasters like Akawa have their own separate app and I would hope that Roost in the future would develop an app or something that is you know tailored to this machine where you basically use that app instead of this particle third-party app the second issue I think that probably most people are gonna have is the price tag this unit is very expensive but with that being said I think one thing to kind of point out is like a lot of people talk about you know home roasters and stuff like that this is not on a home roaster. I don't think they're trying to market it as a home roaster. But with that being said, I think Roost has the ability with a machine like this to eventually dive in to the home roaster market. I mean, the market's there, I feel. There's a lot of people wanting to home roast, but they're not gonna pay 7,000 plus dollars for this type of machine. I mean, if you're a home roaster and you have 7,000 plus dollars to go and spend on a home roasting unit, then let's just say you're doing something right or illegal. Third thing I'd like to see kind of fixed, I guess, would be the user interface. I mean, it functions perfectly, but I mean, we're just into that world with iPhones and iPads and the beautiful icons and everything like that. And if you're paying 7,000 plus dollars, you kind of want to see something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing in this region. You know what I mean? As far as function, I mean, I'm one of them guys, like it functions perfectly, I'm cool with it. But I do know that's going to be a turnoff to some people who are kind of more into the aesthetics of things and all that. And I get it, you know, that's why the Apple phones and all that, like they, 
they make them aesthetically pleasing for a reason, you know, because people want that. So just another little observation there. One last thing, I guess, for me was just the lack of info for this machine. I think this is one of those machines where, you know, there's not a lot of YouTube videos. There's not a lot of like information out there just yet. I think that's what Roost is trying to do uh, now. I'm going to be doing some more detailed videos on like how to set it up, a full roast review. I'm going to do a comparison between the Roost and the Akawa. So I'm gonna be putting some videos out there and uh, I think that's what they need right now because there's a huge lack of information I feel with the Roost and what its capabilities are and what sets it apart or you know what makes it different from other sample roasters. And I don't know about y'all, but that's one of them things. Like if I'm paying 7,000 plus dollars for something, I'm watching every YouTube video, I'm reading every blog and I want to know as much about this roaster as I can before I go and drop that type of money. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and give away some coffee. Now I'm gonna be giving away coffee from this machine here to five people in the comments below that comment Rev Coffee Roasters. And I'll flash it right here real quick too. If you comment Rev Coffee Roasters in the comments, I'll let it go for a week. And then after a week, I'll go down into the comments. I'll pick some system to go through there and, you know, randomly pick five people. Yeah, so five people will get 200 grams of the coffee from the roost. It's going to be a, it's going to be an Ethiopian Sadamo Natural. Now this coffee's bomb. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of one of my favorite coffees at the moment. And uh, yeah. Rev Coffee Roasters, go down there in the comments. Rev Coffee Roasters is a, they're an amazing coffee roaster down here in Louisiana. Um, I'm gonna say probably one of the best in Louisiana. And I don't say that lightly, like uh, their coffee's bomb. Hit them up if you're ever driving through, uh, stop by, super cool place. So if you find these videos helpful, please think about subscribing and liking and doing all that. I truly appreciate it. It helps the algorithm and helps, you know, the channel kind of continue on. Thanks again for hanging out with me as we go over the roost. I truly appreciate it and I will see you next week. Love ya. Spend all this time chasing my dreams and none of them came true till you were here with